pitifully <laughs> tries to fire an arrow at Aaron. He is definitely not helping. Just bounces off Air Diver's muscles. A 20 doesn't even come close to hitting me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If... You got to get into the 30s before you'll hit something solid. Okay, I'll attack the troop again. All right. Leave Abshu alone. Oh, I guess I should move up a bit. Okay. So you are aware that in that position... Yeah, I don't really can, want to be there. <laughs> you can be attacked by the troops, yeah. But you can only be attacked by one of them. Uh, she could technically get attacked by both. She'd both, be adjacent think, to both. Yeah. No, thank well, you. Only one of them can be in the five-foot square in front of her. Well, the idea is that they have set it up so that they're close enough that they can attack around that corner. She'd have cover from one, but it doesn't matter because they're a troop. Leave Abshu alone. Oh, look at that. Natural 20 That's and a natural one. Okay. So... So that's a hit. Does not confirm a miss and a miss. You can roll for triple not one chance. Okay. So you do another little bit of damage. Enough so that you guys have dealt exactly 100 to that troop. And I think that's it. Yep. Anything else for Vesper? Um, no. Darn. Then we'll move to Abishu. All righty. Um, so are they actually uh, in the uh, um, sewage drain itself? So yeah, they don't have enough space that they can be standing just on the the platform area. They some of them are standing in the sewage. Alrighty. Um five foot step back. Heal. And then an augmented body adjustment. So 3d12. Can I burn a fate point to uh, help that roll? Sure. And that would be a plus eight? Um, it would be a plus four to do it after the roll. So. Oh, I haven't rolled it yet. OK. Um, if it's a d20 roll, you can. If it's a healing check, it's. I, I'm not allowing it on a anything other than a d20 roll. So okay, yeah, it's a 3d12 roll. Yeah. Nice roll though. Yep. yep. Um, okay. Can I taunt the troop? You could try. Let them know that I just gave their commander's head in and that they've got their back to me, so they're next. Since they're all got their <laughs> shields pointed forwards, I'm going to shove my fist in places that they don't want me to describe in detail. But it'll look a lot like the stream here. <laughs> that is a vivid description. Um, we'll see. Um, for Abiju, did you, is that everything for your turn you said? Oh, yep, that's it. Okay. So then uh, 
This one. So the reinforcements are Kellen. As we move to Eredavar. The troop's not going? It, I just moved it. Oh, okay. Okay, can I five foot to there and attack the troop? Yes. Uh, well, you, you can't quite five foot into the water since that's difficult terrain unless you can ignore that. Can I attack the troop from there? They're kind of e fuckety where they are. Yeah, you can. It's This is their actual spacing. Oh, okay. I just wanted to check. And are they, in fact, uh, wide open from behind? Pretty much. They aren't getting any of their formation benefits from that side. So it's just their base AC and, and all that. Okay, well, I will do my best to convince them that they do want to put their uh, defenses on this side. Mighty good show. All right. Um, I believe we've discussed this before, but I always forget I can't stun a troop, can I? You cannot, no. Okay, so I won't waste the stun on them. But I assume a 29 from behind is a hit? It is, yes. With the commander down and them in, out of position for the formation, those will all hit. I assume I don't get any of my extra perks on them. Unfortunately not. So the, you wouldn't flank them unless they're all flanked. You wouldn't affect them with any of these abilities unless they were all affected. So yeah, with single target effects, the best you're doing here is just a ton of damage. Looks like 180 points of damage. I will settle for that. It's actually... 210 points of damage minus their DR. Yep. I think that's a record for me. That's pretty good. All right. So you knock down several guys that are in the back. We move to Dranik, um, who I had forgotten about before. Dranik has probably been waiting a long time to make full use of this ability, so he is going to do it now. Um, Granik's not really here. Tell him that he might disappear. Hitting them with that um, nausea field would be kind of cool. That'll force them yeah, to move. Yeah, that's kind of cool, but like, yeah, that'll force them to move, and that was pretty effective before, but. Um, he thinks you guys can actually beat this if you just have a little bit of help. So, um, and given that like these things have been able to save against stuff before, so he's going to um, cast his spell to create a legion of blades here, or a legion of sentinels. He casts it pretty much directly under one of the troops um, as a side effect. Every single one of them is considered to be flanked. Which one did he do it on? The southern one. Okay, for uh, tactical reasons, everyone else concentrate on the northern one. What's the area? It is 10 foot radius, so that is correct, I believe. So yeah, so he just covers this other one with that, and um, that'll be his turn. As we move to the troops again, and the Samurai Warrior between them. So these troops are, let's see here. Let's do a 
high and low. Okay, so this turn, the troops are not going to turn around um, and they will continue to focus um, their attention on Abishu, but they are close enough to Eridabra that they can technically attack both, so they will. So Abishu and Eridabra can each give me one reflex save and then Abishu can give me another. Can you move the dead commander somewhere just so I can five foot there next round? I need a reflex save. Yes. Okay, so you guys both succeed, it looks like. Oh wait, the 19 would fail actually from Abishir. But you rolled three times. Is there a reason for that or? Sticky buttons. Yeah, so it sounds like he would have failed the first attack, um, the save against the first attack, and then saved on the other two. Sorry, like, um, I um, rolled an extra save accidentally, but since I'm burning a fate point for that 19. Sure. Then um, we'll let you use the third one you rolled as the reroll for that. And he does have evasion. Right. Does Aerodavar have improved evasion or just evasion? I don't get improved until ninth level. All right. Then you would each take, or sorry, uh, then Aerodavar would take 34 damage before um, damage reduction, and Abishu would take 72 across two attacks before damage reduction and maybe some both. All right, so I will use two of your uh, abilities. All right. Thank you. Six. Oh, and that's like that happens in my turn. All righty, Al. All right, but you managed to survive another turn. Um, seeing that his shot was pretty pitiful, this um, samurai warrior is going to try to charge Aradabar. And try to attack him with his sword. Let's see if he can crit this. Yeah, 34 for Aradabar before. Okay, I will burn a momentum point and take 13 off of that. You're not within range. Oh, well then I won't do that. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Um, okay, and then would a 39 hit Aerodavar's AC? No. All right. Does his best. Um, commander's already down, so we move to Manny. All right, circle of razor feathers. All right. You can hit both of them, can't you? Yep. That's awesome. Well, I mean, can I go through the shield if they're doing full cover? Would a burst not work? Yeah, so the way I'm treating this is that they are getting their plus 15 to the reflex saves as well. There have to be small gaps in the shield for them to be able to strike out with their weapons. So there's, All right. in theory, there's a chance they could miss, but... Uh, but the so plus with, 15, it looks like it would save on the first and fail on the second. Well, they'd also be getting a minus two because they already... F Although, were you applying the plus 15 last time? I don't think I was. All right, so they might, might they, uh, they might have passed last time and they might not be shaken. They're also a minus two for my shaken. Right. How long is that just when they're in the aura? Uh, yeah, it's for a minute a level. Yeah, but does the debuff last as long as they're in the aura? Um, I don't know. Um, hang on, I'll look it up. Because the northern ones would not be affected if that was the case. I mean, they are still technically in the aura. Oh, or the, the larger aura. I think his is, his is 20 feet, right? Yeah, it's the green aura. Yeah, so it doesn't look like it, but they, they are technically 
Um, Wouldn't they all have to be, though, to... Oh, you're right. They do all have to be. For them to be taken if the penalty, creature so. fails, they take a minus two penalty for the duration of the spell. Okay. All right. Okay. So, yeah, then they would be getting... Uh, so, yeah, they would both fail, so they'd just take the 31 profane times 1.5. Okay. Any other riders on that? Mm, nope. I mean, some of them are added to the collective, but that doesn't really matter. Yep. I have a so okay. that's it. Okay. Then um, I'll do the scout real quick here, and we'll move to Vesper after that. Um, attack! We're flanking now. Ooh. She would be getting twenty. So four. slow. She, uh, you are within the uh, outflank. So, Eredevar would not be getting the plus uh, four at the moment, but everyone else would be. Did the uh, Udiot uh, know how far it was down that tunnel underwater? It didn't say. A best guess for where we'd have to go, how long would it be? Swimming underwater. I mean, let's say you were trying to swim to the outer edge of the city, so you'd probably be swimming for, you know, 20 minutes at least to get to the edge of the city. And then from there, who knows? Not really sure how we're going to get away, though, with Abshu and Dranik. What's the problem with Abshu and Dranik? Well, Abshu's probably going to go down, and even if he doesn't, he's quite slow, and these troops, even if they have to squeeze, can go somewhat fast. Well, I mean, he is hasted right now still, um, as are you all. So um, <clears throat> we'll see how it actually develops. But um, that was all for Vesper. Mm -hmm. She would hit with everything but the last attack. So that means you can oh, roll thanks. another d10 of damage, by the way. Yay. Since she hit with the first two. Ooh, okay. that's good. Nine, if you rend into them. And then um, we move to Abishu. All right. So um, if he moves away, uh, they or wait, if he does a full withdrawal, they don't get an attack of opportunity, correct? Sorry, as you move away, how? If he does a full withdrawal. Oh. Yeah, no. but Josh should get you away from there safely. They don't get attacks of opportunity, do they? Um, as I said before, troops do. It's the mobs that do not. Oh, okay. So he's just going to retreat further down the tunnel a bit to heal up. And that's it for his action.
all right, then it is air devour. Oh, that's the third troop moving up on us? Yes, so by now you can hear the sounds of more soldiers coming from the south. Okay, well then I guess I need to get rid of one of these troops this round. So I will continue to pummel them to death. All right. Oh, holy crap. Okay. Hold on. It's pretty bad rolls, but their AC is not great from this angle, or it chose not to turn around last round. So I think you will hit with everything but that nat one. Then I will re-roll the nat one. All right. You still need to roll for a triple nat one turn. I am quickly running out of uh, fate points. All right. So it's not triple that one, and then that will hit. Okay, so I will do six more damages. These ones all get all right. sneak attack, so that should be really big. Yep. Yep. Okay, new record. Just keep going. 244 points of damage. Are they bloodied yet? They are now bloodied. Okay. That's so much damage. <laughs> you gotta step up, Vesper. And that's it for Aerodavar? Uh Yeah, that's all my actions. I spent my key point and took a full attack. All right. Then um, Dranik's going to try Vertigo Field, I guess. It's either that or he tries um, one of his new fourth level abilities. Vertigo Field on the north one would be handy. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. He would probably do. I'm trying to do like what I think they would do, not necessarily what I would do. So let's, um, I guess this would be a fortitude save. Which they do not get their formation bonus to. Oh, that's it. sweet. So it's either this or rainbow pattern, but I think he'll save the rainbow pattern or the solid fog for some other emergency. Um, what did he take? Oh. Well, they saved. So then... They're still fucked up while they're in the field, aren't they? Yeah. So then, let's see. So it says... Um, no, it's only if they fail their save. They don't need to make another save. But attacks through or from inside the field have a 20% mischance, which is just going to carve their damage down by 20%, regardless of whether they make a save or not. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's something. Um, effect for that. So we'll do something like that, and then we will move to the troops again. So 
the north one's going to hold its position. Um, I think it's going to. Yes, I think the north one is going to move into position to try to cover the tunnel completely as the south one turns around to face Eridavar and um, keep its bonus there. So, oh, I uh, five foot north after my turn. I totally forgot. Okay. Okay. So you five foot north. These would provoke as they're moving past you. Oh, really? So they okay. Will, they will turn around first, so they will get their, their bonus, but yeah. So they'll do an about face, turn around, and you'll have just one of them blocking up the tunnel where the other one faces towards you. Um, Is it some kind of uh, action for them to turn around? No, technically, but I rule it has to be part of a move action. So here they're moving down um, and turning around at the same time, So which they can't do. So then that would miss then with their improved AC, and then they would make an attack against you. So you'd make a reflex save, um, which, you know, pretty much as long as you don't not want it, you should be fine. There you go. Not want it. Oh, wow. Do you have any more fate points? Yeah, I got two more. Okay. Now I have one more. Now things are starting to get scary. Okay. So you take 38 points before DR or any other mitigation. The other troop moves into position. It's not going to make any attacks this round. This warrior is going to move up on you and try to make a full attack, I guess. That's probably its best chance. Doesn't look like it hits with any of those. And that's it. Why isn't Wait, the other troop in that? The other troop. Um, oh, you're right. It is close enough in this position it could attack Garrett Ever as well. So then. Oh, oh it's not the nausea field? Um, so it started to move out of the nausea field, um, but it succeeded on its save. So it's just taking that. But then it, sorry, it provoked from, I forgot. So it provoked from Eridavar, but it also provoked from Dranic. So Dranic has to roll. Um, so for each space, sorry, wait, let me, let me check the description of this. So each space in the thing has an AOO to make. And I think that's right for his spell. It's um, so it's just gonna get like what uh, nine AOOs. It's pretty good. Sixteen. It's gonna get 16. sixteen AOOs against the first troop, and then it's gonna get um eight AOOs against the second troop. Wow. So I'm just gonna mass roll these. All right, and then for this, the bonus that it has, um, this is how we're gonna get our triple net twenty, just <laughs> mass AOs. Yes. Um, how we beat them, guys? Alternative blind house rule luck. We could also get our triple nat one. And these swords turn out to be made of empowering energy, and they just make the troops all go super saiyan. So they threaten on it 19 to 20. They deal 1d8 plus 1 per 3 caster levels. I think it's only plus 2 here. What type of spell is it? This is an illusion shadow spell. You might want to check. Gnomes get all kinds of bonuses on that shit. Yeah. Let's assume that he gets at least one extra caster level. So these are going to be 1d8 plus 3. Um, and then... Oh, why did I close that? And then it's uh, what's the attack bonus? 
on this since he didn't put it in his thing. So um, attack bonus, uh, bonus equal to your caster level. Okay, so it's going to be plus eight. So then to hit their AC, assuming they don't have that, means it's got to roll a 15 or higher. So on any of these rolls that are 15 or higher, gets through. We'll roll for these all of these uh, triple 20 chances now first. OK, so no triple 20s or 1s. So that's 1, 2, 3. Oh, but they get the bonus from flanking as well. So that means that it's plus two. So actually, it's any roll of a 13 or higher. Tranic is finally our high, highest damage dealer. I don't think this is going to deal much damage, but uh, he definitely deserves some credit for my damage. Oh, wait. wait, that's for total damage, but I need to do it per troop, so that's minus. So you got two hits on the second troop. So that's going to be nine. actually rolled better on the reroll. Yeah. Okay. So in the end, I forgot their DR applies, which negates a big chunk of this damage. But um, it's something. Isn't it a magical attack? It is, but magical attacks don't automatically bypass the DR. Depends on the type of magical attack it is. Oh, you're right. It will depend on if the damage it says that the damage is physical or. Honestly, it's it sounds like it is just a standard weapon attack. Um, yeah, it's slashing damage. So yeah, it's it's just a standard weapon attack. So yeah, it would seems like it would either be that or shadow damage, and we don't want shadow damage. Yeah. So unfortunately, not too much damage, but um, something there. Um, and then, sorry, and then it was Manu's turn. I assume it's Razor Feathers again? Um, I don't think so, because I still can't see anything, right? Yeah, they completely blocked off the entrance area. All right, standard action. I'm going to refresh. OK. So you know what? I, I guess. Standard. I guess I can just throw it out there. It's not going to work. As a move action, I'm going to activate my totem aura, which is a no save shaken for okay. these guys. But because they're immune, it's a save shaken. Okay. So they get will saves and they both pass. And it's... Well, they don't get their immunity bonus on the save, right? So they don't. What? I thought you said they did. No, because it's a no fear save effect. fear effect. Yeah, when it's no save, then they get a save, but they don't get their immunity bonus. All right. Well, I think the DC is still pretty low for this one. I'd have to check. All right. No, it is. So, yeah, they would be shaken. No, wait. The first one would pass. The second one would fail. DC 25. Okay. Okay. So they're shaking. Hey. Okay. All right. Um, would a minus two have made a difference there? Uh, yeah. Because uh, these ones are still in Air Divers or, and I believe they failed against their initial save against this thing, right? Uh, yep. So I... Then they would both be shaken. Okay. Okay. Then Scout is going to continue firing at Aradaver repeatedly as we move to Vesper's turn. Oh, it was Max who lied to me. He is the one who said that they would get the... All right, I will reply to him and tell him he was wrong. Okay. Um, 
so this is just a wall of shields now? Yeah, basically. You can still attack them. Um, like, they count as total cover in, um, in a sense, but really it's just like a much higher AC. Nothing's really changed. The old one was a wall of shields, too. Okay. Yeah. Right. Sorry, I never resolved the attack um, against Eridavar that I was supposed to do. So Eridavar could give me one more reflex save as well here. All right, and Vesper's getting the plus two or plus four bonus for this. Or what's your total plus bonus four. against flanking enemies? If it's plus four, I think. And that's it. I think she would miss on these attacks. She also has a plus two from me. Okay, that plus two will make a difference. So she'd hit with the first two attacks. Oh. Extra d10. Oh my gosh. Yep. Right. So then Air Dabber dodges um, against the attacks from before. Um, so let's does a critical save give me anything? No, unless you triple it. Okay, you didn't. But you would take um, that uh, third before um, applying mitigation. Unfortunately, I'm still one five foot step away from mitigation. I wish I had realized earlier and started moving up. Hmm. Okay. So Aired ever does, or sorry, uh, Vesper does a pretty good hit on these guys. Maybe takes a guy out with her attack, but there's still a lot of them that are standing strong, holding their shields together. Anything else for Vesper? Mm, no. Are we running? Are we leaving now? <laughs> we are, in fact, leaving now. Okay, then I will... If I can move, I'm going to start moving away. I think. All right. And then how about for Abishu? Um, going to sneak one of my small non-full round healing abilities in and continue withdrawing. OK. Devil will see the uh, the troop from the south kind of move into position here. Uh, it doesn't have enough space to kind of get to him where he's located, but uh, it is now joining the fray as we move to Eredever. Okay, well, I laugh maniacally at them and leave the fray. All right. I will spend a key point and jump to freedom. All right. That will do it. So they they saw you do an impossible feat before. They they couldn't explain it. They thought they eyes must have deceived them. And then they see you do it again with some ease, and they are utterly baffled. Okay, so that was only. Th 30 feet of my movement. I'm tempted to wait here. Um, yeah, I could be really bold and land in front of them and make an attack, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, I still have my standard action, so I'm going to use my wholeness of body to heal myself. All right. So that gives me back 16 hit points. Standing next to menu, that should mean that I don't die if I get attacked again. Okay. And that would be all of my actions. 
Okay. Then it is Drannick's turn. Uh, 